this is kind of a long-winded story, so bear with us here. We're on the road anyway, we've got time. About three months ago, someone up in North Dakota was getting evicted from his house and had to get rid of the majority of his collection. So with the help of somebody we now consider a friend, we didn't know her before, she reached out to us asking if we could take in his rattlesnakes. He had three rattlesnakes at the time and she was trying to find them a home. Well, he was able to get rid of, it sounds like, everything except for these three rattlesnakes, which he really liked, even though it's debatable the conditions they were in. I still don't quite know all the details, but he decided instead of rehoming them, he was going to take them to the hotel he was gonna start living at and uh, just not tell the hotel, hotel staff that there were gonna be rattlesnakes in this room. We were like, okay, you know what? If that's what he's gonna do, we can't we can't change his can't mind or anything. Force somebody to get rid of their animals, I e guess. Exactly. So we thought all was said and done. Well, fast forward to today, about three months later, he is now moving out of the hotel and got rid of the rattlesnakes. I don't know if they caught him in the act of keeping rattlesnakes in his room or if he just decided to move out and rehome the rattlesnakes, but he gave them to a guy who doesn't want them and doesn't quite have the training and experience to safely house them himself. So he reached out to her, who reached back out to us, asking if we could take them in still. Right? That all makes sense? I think so, That's, yeah. I think everything did, that... There was three rattlesnakes, now he's down to two rattlesnakes one in of a three-month period. One yeah, of them died. One did die, So that could have been one of the reasons why he ended up getting rid of them. True, of them. yeah. Sometimes if you're slacking on care, it takes that first death to make people realize, oh my gosh, I can't take care of these animals, which is sad, but at least two are still alive. I don't know what conditions they're in, but we are heading up north for a spontaneous trip to northern Minnesota, I guess, to meet this guy about halfway to pick up some rattlesnakes. Hooray, rattlesnakes! Hooray! <laughs> Alright, we've got our buckets, our venomous buckets. There's gloves in there. We've got our hooks. You'll have to ignore all the plastic bags. I've been meaning to drop them off at recycling. I just keep forgetting. But I think we have all the supplies we need, even though I'm sure they're being transported in something. I just don't know if he needs to keep whatever they're in, and therefore if we need to put them in these buckets on our way back. So we'll see what happens. Oh my god. Wow. There's a lot of poops in there. Yeah, There's it's a lot been of in there for a while. I don't see. I mean, we'll take a closer look. Not in yeah. the cold, of course, but <laughs> first inspection, I don't see any mites, at least. All right, and now we have... You get to listen to a rattle all the way home. Yeah, now we get to listen to two angry rattlesnakes, or at least one angry rattlesnake on the way home. And it is negative three degrees. Oh boy, this is gonna be interesting. On the plus side, these guys do look halfway decent. And there were surprise Burmese pythons. Yeah. Wasn't expecting Three that. Three berms. Three berms as well. We have two in the black bin right there. There's two berms there. It looks like a hypo berm right there. Yeah. And then we've got rattlesnake, rattlesnake. I guess the berms will be added to our adoption program. We'll see. As soon as they're deemed healthy, obviously. We have yeah. to do health checks on everybody. We're going to treat everybody for mites just to yeah. be safe. It sounds like they were not from the best of conditions. But the first thing we're gonna do is a bedding change. Oh, yeah. That is disgusting. Both of them have no water and there's tons of poops in each one. So. Well, I'm guessing the water was just emptied for transit. I doubt it. He didn't reach in to do it. Oh, that's right. He hasn't touched them yet. No, he hasn't. He never even opened the cages on the rattlesnakes. So. Oh, that's right. So they have been without water. Mm -hmm. Aw, this is Sophia. And I don't know that one's name, but uh, there's... I don't know if that one came with the name. We haven't seen that one yet either, so that'll be a surprise when we get back to the facility. But yeah, I guess we're gonna drive back and take it from there. Yay, two hour drive back to the facility. Woohoo! All right, we just dropped off all the animals. We've got the rattlesnakes over here. We have the berms that we have yet to see in there. Look and how cute this one is. Do you need some ice for that berm? No, you're not gonna use that pun, no. Thank you, Kim, that was a great pun. I'm gonna use that all disgusting. the time now. So this berm that we were told was actually not very friendly. Super it's friendly. Very friendly right yeah, now. I just picked them out of the bin. Or yeah, her. I think they were saying this one's a female. Okay. And they were saying that we should treat for mites to be safe. Oh, I 
haven't seen a single mite. You've been looking her over. Her Sorry, I stopped or I didn't get a chance to start recording until like yeah. a minute after you had already taken her out. Like you'd see her, you'd see mites on a body like this. Yeah, especially. God, okay, yeah. you're a little head shy, but not too bad actually. I don't see There's any. There's no mites. swelling around the eyes. Yeah, nothing in the pits, which is another place yeah. you look for mites in, and around I mean, the eyes. And I'm guessing if she had mites, they'd be everywhere. Probably. I've been playing with this snake for like five minutes now. So. Yeah. Okay. So the the hypoberm, which this has got to be a hypo. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a hypo. She is gorgeous. Yeah, we don't is. need her ourselves, I don't think. So don't give me that look. We don't need we another might berm. Need another berm. She How is... could you say no to me? She I is... am so beautiful. I don't know if we need another berm. But oh. <laughs> well, don't dude, stop doing that. I'm gonna cave and want another berm. We're probably gonna keep this berm. And now we get to play the waiting game. I want to see what's in this bin, but Emily got stuck talking to somebody out there. Hmm. Do, do, do. Let's go check on Drax. Where is Drax? Oh, there he is. Aw. Hey, little dude. Oh, yeah. I don't know if anybody knows this, but his name is Drax now, and he's kind of shy. Calm down. Or just go right back into the water. You filming that? Yeah. Cause I was bored. Yay, she's here. We can continue with the video. <laughs> okay, next we're gonna look at these other Burmese pythons. There's two berms that are in here. Which is what we're told were in there, so I'm going to treat it with caution. <laughs> yeah. Even if they are in fact berms, I want to be careful in case they're not very friendly berms. Oh, oh look they at that. are berms. They're two berms. They look actually pretty healthy too. Yeah, they do. But we're told they're not friendly. I mean, we were told that about the last one too. That is true, and she was a big sweetheart. Granted, yeah. she was probably a little chilly. Oh, oh look puffy, at you. Puffy boy or girl? Yeah, you're kind of stinky. I don't know how long. Probably haven't been in here too long. She's not super happy. She feels kind of tense in my hands. Yeah, but she's not showing any like threat behavior. Yeah, I also want to make sure she stays away from my body until I can verify she doesn't have any like mites or anything. I don't see anything under the chin. I know, you don't like this. I'm sorry. No snake likes to be grabbed by the chin. Doesn't look bad. I mean, we're going to treat him anyway just to be safe, but these actually look to be in really good shape as well. That one. Hey. Oh, oh and that's happy. our girl. That's definitely our girl, I'm guessing. Okay. She just tried to uh, express some musk at us, oh, too. Oh, lovely. Well, this one's handleable. That one, maybe not I so mean, much. I bet if we got this one out. Yeah. Well, Ed got the female out, and she is not happy. Oh, don't uh, bite yourself, girl. Yeah, she's definitely not yeah, happy. She's not a happy girl. Mine's well behaved. Oh, yeah, you're a good boy, aren't you? You're a great oh, berm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Her not so much, no, but that's okay. All right, so the plan for these two berms is actually just to treat them like a regular surrendered snake or surrendered reptile in our adoption island. We're going to quarantine them, make sure that they are in fact healthy, which they definitely seem healthy here. That one just has a bit of a tood. And then after quarantine, we'll be able to find them really good homes. Hello. All right, buddy. She's not bad. She'd be workable. Yeah, with some time, some TLC. She only bit at herself one time. Yeah, that's not bad. All right, well, we're gonna set them up in a adoption island later not in this video now you get to mop yeah because she musked everywhere on the floor and then we're gonna check out these rattlesnakes which have deplorable conditions so that's gonna be interesting all right so in here is a southern pacific rattlesnake we actually identified this guy before we started filming because we wanted to make sure yeah on the cage it says northern pacific yeah but it's, it's wrong it's a southern pacific and first let's uh, admire this amazing cage that this thing and this this yeah. one is young, so I can understand. Yeah, but... so this one actually doesn't have too bad of a setup. It's no. a 20 long, which is a good size. Ew, it's got that poop that just yeah. happened. Yeah, that's a gross poop. It might yeah, be a regurge. That could be a regurge. It has a decent sized water dish. It does only have two hides, but that's not the end of the world. It has pretty clean substrate too. Yep. But just wait until the diamondback, the yeah. other rattlesnake. So we're gonna start on a more positive note with this little guy. Oh my goodness! Aww. You're so little. Hi, little Pacific friend. Spicy friend. A little spicy friend, yeah. So this is, in fact, the Southern Pacific Rattlesnake. With the help of our friend Jeff, we were able to confirm, just to make sure. And you can differentiate between the Northern and Southern Pacific Rattlesnakes by the, their tail. The Southerns have this black band right before their rattle, whereas the Northerns have evenly spread light and dark banding all the way to the rattle. So the nice thing about the uh, Southern Pacifics is this is a pretty easy easygoing, laid-back species of rattlesnake.
be compared to some others like Diamondbacks, which we'll get into in a little bit here. Yeah. And just look at this gorgeous pattern too yeah. down the back. The contrast is amazing on this guy. Yeah. And these. And he's chill. Yeah. Yeah. This one's very chill. They don't get terribly large compared to some other rattlesnakes out there, so they are more of a manageable t size too. And it does seem to be in good condition. Yeah. I mean, that seems like a very healthy looking rattlesnake. Young. Yeah, young, but yeah, young but healthy. You know, just a few little segments on the rattle. Mm -hmm. That is adorable. And it seems like he's a good weight. He doesn't seem dehydrated. I don't see any stuck shed at all. The eyes look clear. The tongue is behaving normally, like the forks aren't stuck together as he flicks. Everything considered, this one looks to be like he's really healthy at least. Now again, one of these three rattlesnakes did pass away between the two times we were reached out to. So I do wonder the condition of the one that passed, but this one at least looks good. You want to pick him up and check for mites? <laughs> yeah, barehanded. Yeah, like I'm going to free handle a rattlesnake. <laughs> I don't see anything running around. It's freaking me out because I'm so close. Yeah. I, and I, I, he just swung towards me. I'm like, oh my gosh. Oh, I'm watching. Except I'm really far away still, so I don't see anything. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, we'll probably treat his bedding too, just to be safe. And both rattlesnakes, uh, we're actually going to quarantine at our house because the most secure cages we have here at the facility are right next to our personal collection. And we don't want to put these guys right next to our personal collection no. uh, right away without quarantining. So we're going to put you back in this tank. All right. So that's rattlesnake number one. We're going to put the lid on and the locks on, and then we'll take out rattlesnake number two. Okay. Rattlesnake number two, the diamond bed. Well, we haven't really officially identified it. So we're going to take it out, but I believe it's a diamondback rattlesnake. That's what it looks like. This one's a little bit bigger. You may notice it's cage here. It hasn't been cleaned in a while. We'll take a look at that later too, more up close. You are so calm and collected. No, we are not happy. No, we're a not happy snake. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, you are gorgeous though. Look I at you. Like the pinks almost. Yeah, I did not realize that salmon pink color until just now. And also look at the blocky head too. Oh. What an adorable little rattle sound. So yeah. it's definitely not an Eastern Diamondback because Easterns don't have the white on them. That's right, yeah. So since it has white, it's not an Eastern Diamondback. So it's either a Mojave or a Western, which then we have to look at the tail. If we look at the banding on the tail, and this sometimes isn't 100% accurate depending on certain individuals, but Mojaves will have more white in their banding, like a two to one ratio of white to black. So they have small black bands, whereas it's pretty much 50-50 with Western Diamondbacks. So looking at the tail, I don't know. I think it looks pretty 50-50. Yeah, I think it's pretty 50-50. Yeah, so I, I know think... Westerns are pretty readily available online, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah they're too available. Yeah, yeah, so I'm pretty sure this is a Western Diamondback. Okay, yeah, I think we've got a Western Diamondback as well. This is a species of snake that a lot of people will use in movies because they're not hesitant to rattle their tails and strike up that beautiful strike pose. They're also a little bit more active than the timber that we have in the zoo. Yes. <laughs> well, Ed watches her over there. Let's take a look at this tank here. Oh, man. Um, well, I guess first off, this is a pretty small tank, too. I think she's about the length of both of these sides combined, but she's a very active species. Anyway, we have a lot of poop in here. I don't know when the last time this was clean, but we've got a lot of fur buildup, poop buildup. Aw, poor thing. I also don't know when that water dish has been filled last, but yeah, this tank needs a good cleaning. And I think we're going to move her into a bigger enclosure at our house for quarantine as well, just to give her some more space. But overall, she looks healthy. Yeah. She's definitely on the move. Yeah, she is very active. She likes to be moving. <laughs> she just wants to... She like sees, I think, that. She's going for it underneath that cage. Probably. Thank you for not letting her go under that yeah, cage. Yeah, uh, we just have a rattlesnake that lives under there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> We let's not have that. So yeah, we are going to set her up in quarantine. We're going to set up the berms in Adoption Island and just treat them like a normal surrendered snake to get them good homes after quarantine. We've got this little guy who is adorable that we're going to quarantine at home because we have nice secure cages away from our collection there. And uh, I think we're going to come back after quarantine, aren't we? Yes. Okay. Well, we'll put her back there for now because we know it's secure. And guys, please do not take, by the way, this is a disclaimer. Please do not take rattlesnakes from other people, even in rough situations, if you are not trained with venomous snake handling, because you do not want to risk your own life to save a rattlesnakes. Find somebody who is experienced with uh, venomous stuff and reach out to them. Exactly. Don't take it on yourself. Find somebody who is experienced, please. Uh, I don't know if we're going to keep these long term. We might. There's we're... been some plans. We don't have a Massasauga in the zoo yet. 
yet. These guys are good show-offs, so she might be going into the zoo until we can get one of those. And then there's some other things down the pipes um, that we haven't announced that we hopefully are moving towards where we might need him. Yeah, oh, I like how sneaky you were. Yeah, yeah you're not, not giving anything away. Yeah, there's secrets oh, in the works. Um, yeah, so we are going to come back after their quarantine is done and we yep. have decided what to do with them. All right, we are back home and we have their temporary enclosures set up here in our spare bedrooms. They're the old garter snake enclosures. Yeah, yeah, these are the custom reptile habitat ones from our friend Paul that we used to have above our fireplace on the mantle with the garter snakes in it. Well, now they're gonna be used for rattlesnakes. Hooray! <laughs> because this was kind of an unexpected acquisition of ours, but that's all right. I figure if the, the garter snakes can't get out, the rattlesnakes can't get out. That's true, that's a good point. So, I think, should we just go for it? Should we yeah, just, let's just put them in? Yeah, take him out and throw them in. All right. We go. Check it out. Look, you've got clean water, a new water dish. Oh, that's oh, scary, that's apparently. Scary water. You've got a neat little hanging cork hammock. Doesn't that look fun? There we go. And we're actually going to start using the locks on these cages, too. Oh, he's already climbing. Oh my gosh, you made it all the way to the top. Good job, buddy. <laughs> he's like, How do I escape? <laughs> yeah, really. Oh, I'm not happy with you guys. We are not happy. Well, she is moving. At all. Check oh. out your new digs. She likes that a lot. Ooh, she instantly doesn't... was quiet. All right, and she is set up as well, safely relocated to her new enclosure. But yeah, we're gonna, regardless of where they end up in the long run, they are gonna quarantine in here for a little while. And then, like I said earlier, we're probably gonna hang on to the Southern Pacific Oreo, unless we change its name, I don't know. <laughs> uh, we'll probably hang on to this because we have plans that involve education with rattlesnakes in the future. I don't wanna give away too many details, but he would be perfect for what we have planned. Mm -hmm. So we are gonna touch base later after they have eaten and once we move Sophia out of quarantine. Sophia, your quarantine is over. Where are you? Oh, you're up there? Oh my goodness. That is an interesting sight. A rattlesnake in the garter hammock. Today's the big day. We're gonna move you into a bucket and bring you to the facility. Oh, she doesn't like that idea. So it's after zoo close. She's been in the bucket all day. Emily's working on emails. I'm working on the waiting list emails. The waiting list opened up and I have about 300 emails to go through. I can take a break. It's, by the way, anybody looking for the waiting list, it's already full. They're I'm all you, full. It's full. I'm so sorry. They're all full. They all filled up on Patreon, and this has been my weekend. That's why it's taking a while to get your emails back. Let's but go move uh, Rattlesnake into the zoo. Let's Here you take go. a break and move take Rattlesnake. Take your uh, scepter. We have a cool sign for her. I made, well, Emily made it, and I put it together. So check out this beautiful sign, by the way. Yeah. Ah, I went off of our template for our other signs, Western and I Diamondback. made it myself using the template. Thank you. Lauren for the template <laughs> so I could make that on the fly. Before we put her in, all the holes have been sealed up, right? Yes, everything is sealed, but she does need a water dish, I just realized. Okay. okay, we have a water dish. We rearranged a little bit so it's more aesthetically pleasing, but also gives her places to hide. And you might notice the glass is a little bit filmier, foggier, foggier than on the bull snake's glass over here. <laughs> we had security film added to this glass, so if somebody were to kick it, the glass wouldn't just shatter, it would stick to the film. That was something we had to do regardless of when or what species of rattlesnake no, we, put we didn't in here. have to do it but Emily felt more safe doing it. I definitely way. feel more safe having that done. So it's a little bit foggy but for a good reason. Alright angry girl. Oh that's the least amount of yeah okay that's more like it. Yeah. You're a western diamondback. You're supposed to be noisy. Oh my goodness, look at her! She's so pretty! But that's a lot of weight on a hook, so I'm not gonna hold her out for very long. New home, pretty girl. Aw, she's got such a short little rattle. You yeah. see that? Aww. She'll get her rattle back. Yeah, with enough sheds, she'll grow it back. So she is officially in the zoo! She's moved in! Look at that! We have another snake in the zoo. The end goal is to still have this wall be Minnesota native, so we would still like to put a western massasauga in this enclosure someday, but since they're pretty hard to find, we're, we're discovering, we're just gonna wait and have the diamond back in here until we get a Massasauga, so there's at least something in this enclosure for people yep. to see and learn about. Okay, it's been like an hour, I think, give about. or take, and check out where she got comfy. She's up on a ledge! Aww. Aww. She looks so comfy up there, too. We have never offered a soft fur, an African soft fur before, but we have an extra. She wasn't getting along with the other soft furs, so she is no longer with us. So we're gonna see. Let's this see. will be the first time we get to see her strike too. Yes it will. She's been actually a pretty good uh... Yeah she's never struck before despite lots of rattling. Do you want it? 
It's tasty. Oh, wow. There you okay. go. Okay, I'm not even gonna make you look for it. I'm just gonna it. leave it right there so she can eat it. Well, thank you everybody for watching today's video where we spontaneously drove up north to rescue a couple of rattlesnakes and a couple of Burmese pythons. Something we were not expecting, that's nope. for sure, but we weren't able to find a massasauga for this enclosure anyway, so it all worked out. I'm really curious to see how she does with the public, but we put her in on a Sunday night right after we close, since we're closed on Mondays and Tuesdays. She'll now have two days of being alone just to get used to her new surroundings, and then traffic flow will slowly increase before her first weekend here in a busy zoo. So I really hope she does well. I think she will. She seems pretty relaxed as far as diamondbacks go. I mean, she's your typical diamondback, but she hasn't struck at all, so yeah. I think we'll be okay. Thanks again for watching. Thank you, amazing Patreon backers, and we'll see you next time.